This is Patrick Achiocron, and at a recent trade show, a lot of people were asking me about the difference between the ham clock and the Geocron, and my answer was, it's like taking part of the ham radio bundle out of the Geocron and putting it into a browser window. Let me explain. With the ham clock, the user downloads and installs a program to a Linux platform, and then once it's set up by the user, you get a real tidy display that includes data for a ham radio audience. The Geocron is totally self-contained, and there's a lot more to see because we have other audiences besides ham radio. So in addition to everything you see here, Geocron also displays real-time satellite tracking, commercial aviation, earthquakes and volcanoes, atmospheric pollution, ISS Live Earth video, and real-time data for regional and world weather, including lightning, radar, storm tracking, geocolor satellite images, and all of these. And these. Plus, all of that is available with zoomed regions so that you can really get into the details. But the ham clock doesn't do any of these. In many ways, it reminds me of the first generation of Geocron from many years ago, which just had a few handful of layers, but we had to move up to the Atlas version because we just have so much more processing to do to get it on your screen in 4K. But I get it, the Geocron also costs more. And that's because we're delivering far more layers. Our hardware has to stitch together various maps and all those layers together in 4K resolution for those big, beautiful displays that everybody likes. And most of that cool data comes from commercial sources that cost us money to get. So to us, the ham clock is a good adaptation of the Geocron for the budget conscious amateur radio enthusiast. What we've done with the Geocron is just present a much larger environment, beautifully detailed maps stitched together in real time with human and natural events. But in the end, I think both of them do a great job at bringing us all closer together. And that's the point.